In this lesson, we will discuss journals in Odoo Accounting. We'll discuss configuring and using journals, and changing the way journal entries are numbered. Let's briefly touch on some key concepts first. Journals are used to group similar transactions together, allowing you to register transactions in order by date. Transactions from related accounts are recorded in journals chronologically. For example, all statements from a bank account, all customer invoices, or all supplier bills. The entry sequence of a journal determines the way in which your journal entries are numbered. Let's open up our database to go over some of the different options available when configuring a journal. We'll open the accounting app, then go to Configuration, Journals. Here we find the list of predefined journals. We can modify these or create new ones as needed. Let's open the Customer Invoices journal to see how it is configured. Here we see that it is of the type Sale. There are five types of journals in Odoo. Sale journals are used to post customer invoices and refunds. Purchase journals are used to post supplier bills and supplier refunds. Cash journals are used to keep petty cash and to keep track of your cash transactions each day. Bank journals are used to post your bank statements. And miscellaneous journals allow you to post miscellaneous entries, such as your VAT, your provision, end of year corrections, and anything else that doesn't fit into another journal type. A journal's shortcode is used to easily identify a journal. The default debit and credit accounts are only mandatory for bank journals, so let's open up your bank journal, then go to Journal Entries, where we find the general ledger account which is linked to the bank account. If we open the configuration menu, we find the bank accounts menu, which lists all of our bank accounts. Here we can open our bank account to add our account number, which is linked to your bank with a bank identifier code and an address. From this menu, we can also determine the debit methods and payment methods that will be used. We will go over this in detail in the lesson on reconciliation. And now if we go back to our journal, In the Advanced Settings tab, we see that the Bank Type Journal has different settings than other types of journals. For example, Miscellaneous, Vendor Bills, or Customer Invoices. So, what if we want to change the way our invoices are numbered? What we don't see here is how we can set the entry sequence. To access these settings, we need to be in Debug Mode. To activate Debug Mode, click About, then Activate the Developer Mode. In version 10, Debug Mode is activated from the Settings app. This makes some new menu options visible. Specifically, here we see the entry sequence of the journal. Let's open it to go over our options for changing the numbering schema. Journal entries are numbered using a prefix, a suffix, and a number. In the Sequence Size field, we define the length of the number. With the sequence size set to 4, the number will have 4 digits, with the first invoice numbered 0001. The step determines how much the sequence number will increment with each new invoice. With a step of 1, the second invoice will be numbered 0002. With a step of 5, the first invoice would be numbered 0001, and the second invoice would be numbered 0006. Here we can add a prefix and a suffix to the entry number. By default, the Customer Invoices journal starts its entries with the short code of the journal, slash, then the range year. At the bottom of the page, there is a legend of the dynamic time and date values that can be used in the prefix and suffix fields. Each of these begins with a percent symbol and ends with the letter S. Simply copy them into the field to include them in the entry number. If we enable using subsequences per date range, the invoice number will reset at the beginning of each new date range defined below. Here we have defined a date range for the calendar year of 2016. We can define any range here, like months, for example, as long as there are no gaps between them. And on the right, we can see the number of the next invoice in each range. So here, the next invoice in 2016 will be number 35. When a new entry is created outside of the existing date ranges, a new range will be created based on the previous date range. For example, when we create the first invoice of 2017, a new date range from January 1st to December 31st, 2017 will be created. So, taking into account each contribution configured here, 
the first customer invoice of 2016 will be numbered INV slash 2016 slash 0001. Now let's use the breadcrumbs to go back to our journal settings to talk about some other settings that we can see with debug mode enabled. Under the Advanced Settings tab, we can choose to group invoice lines. This means that when you have different products in the sales invoice that are related to the same general account, if you group invoice lines in the accounting entry, you will have a single line for each combination of products in the same general ledger account. Here, we can also choose to show the journal on the dashboard. So when we click back to the dashboard, we see the customer invoices journal here. This allows us to quickly create invoices, make selections, etc. So let's go back to the journal configuration again. You can also control which accounts can access this journal. Here you can choose to allow specific account types or specific accounts to be used. When setting these parameters, be sure to add all of the allowed accounts. If you create a new account and you forget to add it here, then you will not be able to post to that account in this journal. Depending on the type of journal, there will be some additional settings tabs available too. Here in the bank journal, we have point of sale and bank account tabs. They will be discussed in the point of sale and reconciliation lessons, respectively. And so this concludes our lesson on journals. Thanks for watching.